finally, the Uncanny X-Men Top Key series finale is upon us. There's a pretty big book in this one too. Hello everyone, Steve from Cantu Comics here. If you've been following along chronologically, I was going over my best Uncanny X-Men key books and ended on issue 249. In case you haven't seen the other three parts, I highly recommend stopping and watching those others first. They are linked in the description and above. So let's finish these off. So to start off, we have issue 250, two copies here. Uh, this is a key, a pretty minor medium key. So this features the first appearance of Worm. So newsstand and direct edition, another Mark Silvestri cover. So 251 is next. This here is a pretty nice iconic Mark Silvestri cover. I, I love this crucifixion one. So aside from this cover, there is no significance, no key or anything here. Um, but I, I definitely consider this cover being a key because it's pretty, pretty awesome. Issue 252 is next. I have two copies. And again, no real significance aside from a Wolverine story going on in here. So, you know, I like Lady Deathstrike and she's, she's rocking her, rocking like her finger blades there. So, always a kick. So issue 253 is next, and I have three copies. And again, you know, I ran out of, <laughs> uh, you know, I ran out of bags and boards a while back, but um, yeah, no, no significance. Just another Mark Silvestri, really, really nice cover. But uh, that's about it. So issue 254 is next. Uh, again, no real significance aside from this is the new team. Um, but it's not like a very iconic team, but you know, they're showing off, you know, their new suits and everything. Their, their yellow and blue uh, outfits, uh, costumes. But yeah, that's, that's the only significance. So issue 255 is next. I have two copies here. Uh, this does feature the death of Destiny 3 uh, and Stonewall. And two copies, so new stand and direct edition. So, uh, you know, minor, minor characters, but you know, it does show their death on, uh, on the cover. So, you know, it, it's a pretty good issue, but uh, again, also a Mark Silvestri cover. So, you know, a, a minor key. So next we have a, another minor key. So issue 256 and I have two copies. Uh, so this one here features the first appearance of Betsy Braddock as the Lady Mandarin. So obviously, you know, everyone knows her as Psylocke, but this is her first appearance as Lady Mandarin. And again, two copies, and they're both direct edition. So, you know, a medium key. Issue 257 is next. Uh, this is a first appearance for another minor character. So this is the first Rose Wu. Uh, it also has Wolverine versus Psylocke in here. So, you know, that's, it's, it's uh, I guess, a pretty minor key. Um, it is a cover by Jim Lee. So that's, that's another plus to this book. Up next, we have issue 259. I have three copies here. No real significance here, uh, but it does feature Colossus, you know, just kind of showing off his brute strength and everything. And uh, another Mark Silvestri cover. So, you know, Jim Lee has been kind of popping in here doing some of the covers. So, you know, um, this is a, getting close to the time when both of them are, you know, they're trying to figure out what to do at Marvel and stuff. And, you know, they're, they're really, really rising up the ranks. So you can, it's kind of funny, but you can see what's gonna be happening with Image Comics just from like <laughs> looking at these Uncanny X-Men runs because you also got Wills Portacio coming around here too at, around this time. So yeah, it's stuff is heating up. So issue 260 is next. Uh, another minor key. So this is the first appearance of Scylla and two direct copies. So no newsstand, but you know, the, the cover is, you know, whatever. It's got Dazzler on there. I think this is like your stalker or something, but uh, yeah, uh, not, not very significant. So issue 261 is next, and I have two copies. Uh, again, I'm sharing the, the same bag and board, which it is a no-no, but um, now that I've been aware of it, 
I will probably swap them out. Uh, so this one features another minor key. So this is first hard case, first Harriers, and first long bay. Uh, this also has Psylocke in her you know, traditional Psylocke costume here, featured on the cover. And this is also a Jim Lee cover, who is basically the king of drawing Psylocke. <laughs> so yeah, pretty cool cover. So next I have issue 262. I have three copies here. Uh, this does feature the origin of Forge. Um, you know, again, I, I like Forge, he's a pretty cool character. Um, but yeah, this is uh, two direct and one newsstand edition. Um, pretty decent cover, but uh, yeah, got three copies of this guy. So next, we followed it up with 263, two copies. So it's another Forge issue, Forge issue, just uh, continuing, continuing along his origin story. So next, we have issue 264, two copies here. Uh, no significance aside from just beast, beast on here, just you know, being doing beast things. So it's uh, yeah, it's still a pretty cool book. Really, really nice shape too. Actually, these are both of these are really, really nice. <laughs> too bad it's not the next book that I'm going to show you, but uh, but yeah, still pretty nice books. So next is a pretty big book here, and this has been on my wall behind me in a lot of my videos, where you've seen part of it cropped off. Um, but this is the first appearance of Gambit, issue 266. But the question is, is this really his first appearance? Because there's a lot of controversy going on over it, whether it really is or not. And I'll show you the other issue later towards the, towards the end of this episode. Um, but of course, CGC here, they're credited it as the true first appearance. This is graded as a 9.6. I was really bummed that that'd be a 9.4. But this is, you know, it's a very, very, very nice copy. Um, got this graded. I actually, I traded for this book. I traded a Spectacular Spider-Man number one 9.6 graded for the raw copy of this book. Because I knew this was going to get at least a 9.6 or 9.8. And at the time, they were worth the same amount of money, but I didn't care for Spider-Man. And I figured, I, you know, I like Gamma better. So that's actually how I got this book. And again, Adam Kubert, you know, he's awesome. So great artwork, great cover, great book. And again, I'll, I'll show you the controversial issue later. So following up the first appearance of Gambit, we have second appearance of Gambit, issue 267. So again, you got Psylocke on here. Pretty, pretty cool little cover. It's, you know, she's actually, I probably need to replace this bag. It's one of these like old ghetto bags, um, especially second appearance of, this will heat up too as well. So, um, Actually, this, this cover, or actually this book is when I mentioned Wills Portacio. So I think he actually did this cover, so he, he's credited here and also Jim Lee. So they may have either tag team on the cover or um, or they're both in this book in some capacity. So second appearance, another nice book. So next up is actually another very iconic looking cover. So this is also, I believe, Jim Lee. Yeah, Jim Lee here. So, you know, you've got Captain America, Black Widow, and Wolverine in World War I. So this kind of goes back into the story showing them how they all actually fought together uh, back in the day. So that just kind of shows you how old like these characters are. Obviously, you know, Wolverine's really old and Captain America was frozen, but I'm not entirely sure about Black Widow, um, you know, exactly how, what her story was. I'm, I mean, I know she's been in MCU and so I don't know her background, so I'm not really sure how she aged so well. <laughs> so, you know, if you know, you know, you could probably, you're probably shaking your head being like, well, what is this new talking about? But, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I don't know much about Black Widow. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's this cover. Really, really nice, 268. So next we have issue 270. This is part one of the Extin Extinction Agenda. And I just have one copy, which is kind of odd because I have two, three copies of everything pretty much. Uh, another cool cover, another Jim Lee cover. So, you know, again, this, there's a lot of really cool iconic artwork that's popping up during this time. And then issue 271 is next. Again, one copy. Part four of the Extinction Agenda. So no significance aside from that, just more Jim Lee artwork. And then continuing the Extinction Agenda, we have part seven here in issue 272. Um, again, no real significance, just another Jim Lee cover which I guess that is the significance is that it's by Jimmy. And you got Cable on there. I mean, it's, oh man, you got, 
this is they printed a lot of these books that's why they're not worth that much but oh man like these are awesome so we got issue 275 next no real significance it is a double-sized issue and the cover is also gatefold so i won't open it up right now um but you know you, you know you open it up and then it's got the full artwork which you kind of see what's going on because jim lee had his 90s x-men run and they did a lot of those like multiple covers and stuff so you know he was just he was drawn for days so we have issue 276 next no significance just a cool wolverine cover you know anytime he's got his claws out that's that's awesome um but yeah another jim lee cover so issue 277 is next again no significance aside from wolverine and gamut on the cover and it is a jim lee cover so just just the fact that it's jim lee that that makes it iconic again <laughs> So next we have issue 278 and check it out. I got two copies of this one. <laughs> so no significance uh, other than it begins like a new saga called the Muir Island Saga. And this is part one of it. Uh, also Colossus returns in this issue. So other than that, yeah, no, no real significance. So for issue 279, I have two copies again. Um, again, sharing the same bag and board, which is a no-no, but you know, I'm going to change that as soon as this episode is done. Uh, so yeah, it just continues on with the Muir Island Saga. Uh, this is part two of that saga. So issue 280 is next. Two copies, and luckily they're bagged and boarded in different bags and boards. They're separated, yay. Uh, so this is part four of Muir Island Saga. And other than that, again, no, yeah, no significance, just another cool cover. So next we have issue 281. This is a pretty iconic book. So I also have two copies of it. So I have the first and second print. So second print right there. Uh, so you can tell because it's X-Men is in red. So that signifies the second print. So uh, yeah, the significance of this book is that it's the first appearance of Trevor Fitzroy, also the death of White Queen. And then another new X-Men team appeared during this issue. So there's a lot going on in this book. Uh, this is also Will Spartacio. So this is, uh, now this is his turn at X-Men. You know, it's pretty big shoes to fill after Mark Silvestri and Jim Lee. So it's, he does a pretty good job too. So issue 282 is next, and I have two copies here. And this is uh, another iconic issue. So this has a cameo and cover appearance of Bishop. And you know, Bishop, he's, he's pretty big. He's not as big as Cable. Uh, but he's, he's a pretty significant X-Men from, uh, from the 90s. And so we have two uh, direct editions of here. Pretty nice condition copies. More really nice artwork. Uh, I believe, yeah, this is Los Portacio again. And so after the cameo, now we have issue 283, which is the complete full first appearance of Bishop and also features the first appearance of Game Master, Malcolm and Randall, who are minor characters. So obviously Bishop is the big draw here to this book. And you got another Will Spartacio cover. Very iconic. So next we have issue 284. And I have two copies here, again, sharing, <laughs> sharing the big no-no. Uh, but this features some minor characters. So this is the first appearance of Adjunct and Primate. So more, more nice artwork here, more Will Spartacio. So here we have issue 285 of Uncanny X-Men. This one here features the first appearance of Mikhail Rasputin, Shahar Azath, and Will Spartacio artwork again. So pretty nice book, I like it. So issue 286 is next. Uh, no real significance uh, other than a really, really nice, nice cover of Archangel on here. And uh, Jim Lee is back in the reins here <laughs> to discover. So very nice. So issue 287 is next. And this features the origin of Bishop and also the death of those minor characters, Malcolm and Randall. So again, that's why they're minor characters because they died off really, really fast. And pretty nice cover and nice book. So next we have issue 288 here. This is the only significance really is just a bishop cover. And you know, that's that's about it. Um, but of course, bishop's still pretty cool. 
he's just not very popular now, but he, I'm pretty sure he's going to come back here real soon. So next we have issue 289. No significance other than a nice uh, smooch here going on, which, you know, that's actually pretty rare. You don't see very much kissing going on on a cover of X-Men books. Uh, but this is, again, the Wills Portacio cover. So anytime there's like a white background, I actually really dig those. Nice and clean, really hard to keep clean. Um, but in terms of like design and stuff, it's really, really nice and balanced and nice layout. So issue 290 is next. I just have one copy. Uh, this does feature the death of Sai Burai. And, you know, minor character. I actually don't even know who he is, if it's even a he. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, that's about it. Just some cool rain dripping on, on Storm, but that's about it. Issue 292 is next. Uh, no significance aside from some minor characters. So there is the first appearance of Brain Cell, Mimi, and Monty, whom again, I, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, another cool cover. Um, not by Portacio or anyone, just BC Peterson and Rubenstein. Um, but they still have that like 90s vibe going on. So still a pretty cool dynamic cover. So issue 293 is next. And this one I have one copy. Uh, no real significance. It just has a story revolving around the Morlocks. And it has a cover featuring Adam Kuber, or uh, sorry, Andy Kuber. And yeah, you know, pretty, pretty standard. So issue 294 is interesting. Uh, so this actually features the first appearance of Caliban as Death, you know, one of the horsemen. Uh, there's also a trading card featured in here, and then this is also part one of the Executioner song. So that's, you know, that's a pretty iconic X-Men storyline and goes across uh, many, many, many books, and it's bagged. I think all my copies are bagged, which I don't really know if it, it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> because um, I think everyone just kept them bagged anyways. Um, but yeah, 294. And next we have issue 295. Again, no real significance. It is uh, just continues along the storyline. So this is part five. Issue 296 is next. Again, this one's not significant. Just again, carries along the storyline, has another trading card in it. And I believe it's part nine for, yeah, part nine of the storyline. And next we have issue 299 here. This, uh, it's another minor key. So this is the first Great Uncreed. And other than that, no other significance. So issue 300 is next. So this is a hollow foil cover. Um, as you can see here, it's reflecting everywhere. And obviously there's the sunlight outside is causing this really distracting reflection, you know, aside from the hologram. Uh, but this issue does feature the first appearance of Yavitz, Katu, Milan, Neophyte, Scanner, Seamus Mellencamp, Senyaka, Spore, and Vought. This is also a 30-year anniversary issue. So, and it's, I believe it's, yeah, this is like a fat boy too, so this is a big issue. So issue 304 here is next. Uh, this one here has the hologram cover, and my particular copy is signed and sketched by Dan Pinosian. So aside from that, there's no real significance. It's, you know, these copies are a dime a dozen. And next we have issue 328. This one here, no significance, uh, but Joe Madeira did the cover and he's pretty iconic too. And next we have issue 332. This does have some significance to it. It's the first Ozymandias. And other than that, you know, no real significance. It is a direct edition, um, but yeah, that's that's about it for this guy. Next, we have issue 400. Uh, this is the anniversary issue, but other than that, it is not significant at all. Next, actually, we have two copies here. So this here is the first appearance of Azazel and the origin of Nightcrawler in here. So this is issue 428. And I have two copies here. And the next issue after that is 429. This is another minor key, features the first appearance of Kiwi Black. Again, another minor character. So next, we're actually jumping back to CGC books. So this one I have issue 450. This is graded at a 
uh, this actually features the first X-23 in an X-Men book. So this is a pretty early appearance of Laura Kinney. Pretty nice book. Uh, I wish it was a little bit higher grade, but you know, it can't go wrong with a 9.4. And right after that, I have another graded one. So this is issue 451. Uh, this is graded 9.6, and this is the first battle of X-23 versus the X-Men. 452, no significance at all. Just, uh, just the next issue right afterwards, that's about it. So that was the end of my regular run of Uncanny X-Men. I do have my annuals to go over. So right here I have annual number three. Uh, no real significance here, aside from this taking place between issues 124 and 125. Um, but aside from that, yeah, no, no real significance or anything. But it is a pretty low number annual being number three. And looks like, yeah, 1979. Earlier, I mentioned to you about the first appearance of Gambit. So annual number 14, which is this one here, a lot of people are arguing that this is actually the first true appearance. Uh, but it's technically more of the cameo appearance of Gambit. So it's kind of up to you what you think. You know, in terms of like the market, they definitely chose Uncanny X-Men 266 as its first appearance. And that definitely is reflected on the price. Whereas this one here, it's, it's worth some money, but it's nowhere near like, I mean, raw, you could probably get this for like 30 bucks maybe, unless I'm wrong and it's really blown up. But this particular issue here, this is, uh, this is actually really nice. I probably should have created this. This, this is a nice, nice copy. Um, but yeah, you might want to check, you know, your bins if maybe you have this book. This is just one of those like whatever books that you may, may or may not even realize it has the cameo of First Gambit. So the next one is annual number 15. This one has a little significance. So this is the cameo appearance of X-Force. Um, and again, other than that, not much. The cover is done by Mike Mignola, so everyone knows him from Big Red. <laughs> so Hellboy, I mean, this is Mr. Hellboy here trying an Uncanny X-Men annual cover. So pretty nice. So next here we have annual number 16. This features some first appearances of some minor characters. So the first appearance of Amalgam, the Cancellator, Dead Air, Death Sponsors, Lead In, Sweeps Week, and Time Slot. So, you know, a bunch of guys that I don't even know who they are. <laughs> so, not too significant, but, you know, it's still a key. So these are my personal copies of Uncanny X-Men, and I do have some other X-Men books, such as Jim Lee's 90s run and all the X-Dash books. Maybe I can share some of those keys with you in the future. I promise I don't have as many as Uncanny. So were there any particular keys in my collection that you really liked? Maybe you know uh, one of the many copies of each issue. Maybe some like rare variant that I showed you and I didn't even know. Be sure to share below in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more X-Men and comic book and art related content. Until next time, this is Steve from Cantu Comics signing off.